This is Lay with Crash Test Hobby, telling you how to install your electronics in a thinner wing. In this particular video, we'll be using a Spectrum Radio, a 2812 motor, a 3550 pulse battery, an MG90 servos, and a 30 amp ESC. Install your motor in your plane and then lay out your electronics and bind your radio so that you can make sure that everything's working before you install it. Measure back five inches on your wing and put a mark where you're 10 inches wide where you are going to install the radio. And as you can see, mount the battery back two and a half inches from the nose of the plane. Use a soldering gun to melt a slot for your radio. You'll put a servo at each end and your speed control and your ESC will go along the slot along with the wires. Very simple way to do it without taking a lot of strength out of the plane and leaving most of the center core intact. You can either use a straight edge uh, to mount, cut your servo marks or I have a, made a jig because we do it a lot. The sign motion that you see on the soldering iron is to help to cut through the reinforced tape. Make sure you look at which way the cord comes out of your servo when you mount them in the way. Cutting out the battery slot. This is going to be cut deeper than the length of the arm of this soldering iron, so you'll need to do it in several layers. Because I'm cutting through the extreme tape, I used a razor blade to split the tape. Now the soldering iron will follow that track and be able to cut easily through the foam. Once I've cut through and made my main cuts, I make some relief cuts that I'll, so I can pull foam pieces out. Using a pair of needle nose, I pull the foam out. I want the battery compartment on this particular plane all the way down to the extreme tape on the bottom. But the servos, are, I only want deep enough that the servo will lay with the top flush even with the top of the wing. Using a soldering iron and a flat screwdriver, I clean up the holes to where they will do what I want them to do in having the proper depths. I'm now cutting a notch for the battery wires to exit the battery hole. And now that I'm done with my initial cuts, I'm using a solvent to remove the ink. You can also use a dry erase marker, which saves some time. Now I'm cutting slots so the servos will fit. You'll notice how tightly they fit in the holes. Pressing the servos in and just aligning the wires down the hole. Now I need to make sure all my radio fits and I'm cutting places along the slot for my speed control and my receiver. Pull the wires out of the way so I don't melt them. But I cut the holes so that the receiver and the speed control will be tight in the holes. But I also cut some extra space along the slots for wires to be hidden out of sight so you can see that I reach down underneath and widen it then the speed control will fit down in and I can even take the wires and hide them down underneath the speed control. I'm going to do the same with the receiver. Make sure your battery and your speed control wires reach and that you can reach to your motor. These slits are for a velcro strap that will tie the battery and the radio into the plane. Drill the second hole out from the center on your servo. You want to be second hole out so you get proper leverage to the elevon. And then I cut a slit for the speed control wires to exit from around the velcro in the back of the wing. I also enlarged a small place that I can press the battery plug down into to get it out of the air. I'm now moving the servo arm forward one tooth so that it comes towards the front of the plane. That will 
give me more down than up in the rotation of the servo and help to make the rolls more axle. Now we're going to install the push rods in the second hole out from the center on the servo and we're going to cut the slots for the elevon horns. I'm going to show you this close up in just a minute, but the horns come through from the bottom of the wing. You want the front of the horn even with the hinge line in order to get the proper amount of leverage. Close up, make the cut, and punch a hole with a soldering iron so that glue can flow up around the side and get a good grip on that uh, elevon horn. Squeezing hole, the glue down through those holes, push that up and try not to burn your fingers, which I always do, and put the horn securely in place, making sure it is facing the servo. Drill the top hole only with 1 16th inch bit. Slide your easy connector up the wire, fit it through the hole, and then put on the attachment screw and also the snap ring and snap it in place. Now if you look closely at this, this is a way that you can make adjustments to the trim on your airplane quite easily. Now let's do the other side. So you're going to cut and melt a hole and squeeze glue up through the hole, press it up, add some glue from the top and make sure it's all lined up so it faces the servo and that it's going to cool in the proper place. Drill out the top hole, then slide the easy connector down the push rod. Put it through that top hole on the elevon horn and put your snap ring in place, even if it takes a couple of tries. Now we're going to go in and cut the push rod to length. Leave yourself a little bit extra for trimming in the plane. Glue in your servos. In this particular case, the servo is laying flat. I found that I squeeze a little bit of glue down along the brackets on both sides where you'd normally screw the servo down, but then glue three sides of the servo at least to make sure that it's secure and can't pull out in aerobatics. As you can see, the push rods and the servos and the horns are all in place. Now at a midpoint between the servo and the Elevon horn, I am poking a hole and putting in a wire guide. When you put the wire guide in, push it down all the way so it's touching the wire, then put a twist in it. That twist makes it so the wire cannot flex back and forth. You want it to keep the wire from being able to bend when there's stress on that push rod. Here's a closer look at that wire guide. It's time to put some color on the plane and make it pretty. As you can see, I cover up the servos to help hide that servo being there. And then adding just strips of two inch wide colored packing tape, I add a pattern to the plane. Make sure that your top and bottom are different. There's the bottom, there's the top, so that you can tell them easily in flight. We're now going to make Fix the fins to install them. Draw a line along the top of the wing to show you where the fin and the top of the wing meet. And using a soldering iron, open a slit that uh, you'll be able to put some tape through to secure it. Put goop on the end of the wing and then put the fin firmly in place. I'm using electrical tape so you can see what I'm doing here, but the, the tape holds the fin in place while the glue sets. And then I put a piece up around the nose of the plane. If you use the reinforced tape to do this, it holds well, but it dries out in a couple of months. Then I tr trim the back corner of the elevon so that it won't bend when the, if the plane is in an accident. Also, it just looks good. Doing the other side. You can see how that piece holds the fin in place while the glue dries. Piece around the front keeps it from peeling away from the front of the wing. And then I trim off that back corner of the olive one for looks. I'm now cutting some strapping tape. About four holes of the strapping tape gives me the proper length. And I'm going to make a prop guard here to protect the shock cord 
where the prop can chew into it. You wouldn't think the prop will hit this, but over a few wrecks, you can get some damage to that part of your plane. So just bend a U shape and put it around the back of the wing and hold it in place with just a piece of regular scotch tape. Thanks for watching. There are other videos showing how to balance and trim in the plane and also how to install LED lights. Thanks again for watching. This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby.